we go. Just didn't save the file. Okay, so we need to actually communicate with the manager here, and we need to say, hey, manager, we're going to uh, say queue screen, which is a new function um, that was added in 1.2.2. And this actually makes life quite a bit easier. Actually, when I was doing this tutorial, um, doing the dry run for this tutorial, uh, the way that the way that uh, menus worked in in 1.2, 1.21 was uh, it was actually a little bit more convoluted than this. And I figured, you know, this this could be a, a good opportunity to actually clean some stuff up. So, um, added these functions to make life a lot easier. So we're just going to say manager Q screen. Um, ID one because that's going to be the ID that we assign to settings menu since menu already is ID zero, and then we're going to tell uh, main menu to close. Now the rest of the stuff is going to be handled right inside of the manager. We won't have to worry about these screen classes anymore. So we'll just move that out of the way for now. And what we need to do is actually now drag and drop this settings menu class right here and you'll see that it assigns the uh, the screen 2D transition and the animation components uh, for you so we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and assign the manager right here in the inspector and we'll say settings menu and we need to set this an ID to 1 so that we can uh, differentiate it from the main menu and exit button is what we're looking for here and main menu we need to say settings button since we're looking for the settings button there so we'll just go ahead and save that and we need to now uh, inside of the menu manager um, we need to actually drag in settings menu so we'll just drop that in there and now we have main menu and settings menu so that's all well and good um, now we need to actually edit the menu manager script and you'll see there's uh, literally nothing here so we'll go ahead and open that up and there's a couple of hooks uh, that happen when transitioning occurs and uh, one thing we want to do um, is make sure that if, if you are in transition that you can't interact with any of the buttons or anything so there's uh, there's hooks for that and they are uh, two functions called transition did begin and transition did end so we're gonna have to uh, override two public voids and transition did begin and then as well did end And now what we can do from here is actually one function call to say quad UI dot interactive equals false. And what this does is it will actually uh, prevent any raycasts from the from the camera into your into your UI elements from um, ever happening, so that you won't get any mouse events or anything like that. You won't uh, be able to get any detection of clicking on objects which effectively just completely disables your user interface and then when when it ends we want to turn interactivity back on so we'll go ahead and do that um, the next thing we want to do is there's a hook that's called when a screen closes and this is where we're going to handle what screen we move to next so we want to say override public void and its screen did close and that accepts one parameter, which is the screen that closed. So it's a screen 2D and it's called screen. So now here's where we're going to do some uh, some case switching. So we're going to say switch, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the screen that was just passed in. Um, we're going to look for that ID, and that's this is where the uh, the ID comes into play. So we can say uh, case uh, zero for the main menu. And we'll just uh, break that for now. We won't have anything in here. And we'll say case one. And this is going to be for the settings menu, if that was the one that closed. And we're going to say break. 
for that one as well. So from here, we're going to want to call um, open queued screen. And this is going to tell uh, menu manager to open the screen that was queued. And this is good for when you have a, a menu that can branch off into, into multiple things. So like a main menu when you have many sub menus that you can go to like, for instance, the settings menu or maybe a help menu or something else um, or a high scores menu. Um, you can just uh, specify to queue that ID so that when the transition finishes uh, of, of the current menu closing, then you can call screen did close when this when this occurs you can call hey open the screen that I queued to be open next and it only supports one in the queue so if you queue another if you queue one screen and then queue another screen immediately after it will override the 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 first screen um, and since we know exactly since there's only one menu we can go to from settings menu and that's back I want to say open screen and then just specify the ID which is zero for the main menu and then we'll hit save and that's all the programming that we need to do except for one thing which is just call on start this function launch which will give you a nice intro transition for your main menu to, to, uh, to come in and that right there is everything that we need to program to get this short little demo working so the next thing that we need to do is actually add the the uh, the scripts or not the scripts sorry the uh, the animation clips for the transitions. Um, the way that uh, transitions work are they uh, they use the the game object that they're attached to. Uh, they use the name and then the actual state that the menu uh, is going to be in. So close, open, close, open. So we have one for main menu when it's closing, one for when it's opening, and same for settings menu. And this is just a way to uh, to force good naming conventions and stuff, so you you know exactly what you're dealing with. And also, it was the easiest way to uh, to get things to work inside of uh, inside of the framework. So what we need to do now is actually just add these right on. and you'll see that they are right there and I will actually I'll go into main menu here and actually I'll, I'll do a quick rundown of of how these work now we do a top level animation from the actual screen instead of attaching a men or not a men an animation clip to each and every individual button um, this way you can work with things at a, at a parent level and it also uh, it saves the amount of little animation clips that you have to do which can be a real pain if you have hundreds of these things um, so let me just hit uh, control 6 or command 6 if you're working on the Mac right now um, to open up our animation view and you'll see here that uh, we'll just hide this transform uh, for the actual screen itself because we're only working with the transforms of the the UI components so we have logo and we have its uh, X Y and Z and then we have play button X Y and Z and down here we have the settings button X Y and Z so this again is just a really easy way and it's very clean for you to just be able to see all the different uh, objects that you're going to be transitioning with here like I said I'm not going to get into actually setting up these animations since there's uh, some really good tutorials out there that, that cover that for you um, so the next thing that we want to do is if we hit play right now, let's see, hopefully nothing breaks, um, we have some stuff that happens and uh, that's because it's actually playing on awake and we don't want that at all. And actually uh, settings menu, yeah, since, since it defaults to play automatically. Um, so what's happening now, if we hit play, let's just go ahead and uh, hit play again. And you'll see that uh, this does its nice transition and stuff and if we hit settings, there it transitions in and everything works fine you can go back and forth if you hit play it just fires that uh, 
that message saying, hey, play was pressed. Cool. But if you click there, and again, since it's it's disabled when we click it, uh, you can only ever click it once, so you don't get that weird repeat bug. Um, so what we want to do now to clean this up is to make sure that not everything like settings and stuff, make sure that this isn't there uh, to begin with. So we actually just do that by just moving it out of the way. So we just move it out of the way, click it. It doesn't really matter where it is as long as it's not on screen. And for these as well, you probably want to move these out of the way uh, just to start. And the animation is going to correct that for us anyway. And that's just because uh, sometimes you might get that one frame where it renders it in place in its starting position uh, before it actually applies the animation clip. Uh, so to avoid that, you just move it out of the way. So let's go ahead and just uh, play this one more time. And you'll see we have that really nice transition there. And we hit play to our console here saying play was pressed that's fine let's go to the settings menu and there we go that comes in we have that toggle we can play with like I said it doesn't do anything so we didn't any add any scripts to it or anything and if we go back it comes out it comes in back and forth forever so uh, that's how you set up menus and, and screen transitions inside of quad UI um, I hope that cleared up some things and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, stay tuned for the uh, for the next tutorial, and uh, keep watching for any updates. Um, I'm updating the the code base constantly, and adding new features and fixing bugs. So, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.